Okay, who has question number one? Well, I, 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 I did book summary. Okay, do book summary. Um... In our class, we are reading a book called Dear Martin by Nick Stone. It is it is about a 17-year-old boy named Justice who was trying to help his ex-girlfriend get home from a party by taking her keys away due to the due to being under the, the influence of alcohol. <clears throat> a cop stops a cop stops Justice as he was trying to help her and assumes he was doing something wrong without asking. What he was doing, he was then handcuffed for several hours. This this causes Justice to see the world differently. He starts he starts writing letters to Dear Martin Luther King Jr. In the, in the letters, he explains what happened to him and and his feelings about the racial injustice happening in this world. Justice is motivated to make a difference for once and for all. He wants to make better decisions and wants to be more like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. In our section of the book this week, Justice and his best friend Manny go from a car ride and, and decide to churn up the music. While, while at a stoplight, another driver proceeds to yell at them to turn off the music. The boys choose to ignore the driver, but the driver then pulls out a gun and fires into Manny's car. Manny is killed on the way uh, on the way to the hospital, and Justice is in critical condition, but lives. Okay, we got question number one. Um, since in our book the shooting happened at a streetlight and emergency services were being called, how would medical experts approach a gunshot wound? Um, so the first thing they would probably do is have police secure the scene and make sure that any firearms or potential threat is removed. And then they, once they have um, provided safety clearance, they would send the EMTs in. That would do an assessment of how critical each patient is. They're gonna go to the most critical patient first uh, and get uh, transport started. If they're very critical, they probably won't do a ton of intervention. They're gonna load them up, get them to the hospital um, with as quick as possible and then they would call in uh, help if there's more than one victim and they cannot service um, both adequately they'll call in some reinforcements and get them transported as well and what would be some necessary things medical professionals would do first well um, very simple make sure if they're breathing you assess their breathing if they don't have a pulse you try to get them a pulse. I mean, you have to kind of go back to the really basics before you address the gunshot wound. Uh, if their heart isn't beating, you don't really care about the wound. You want to get their heart beating again, and then you can address the wound. So go back to your ABCs, the airway, the breathing, and if their heart is beating. Uh, throughout the text, the, when the shot occurs, it states that Mandy Justice's, Justice's best friend was pronounced dead and moved to the hospital. Can you help us understand the effects of the gun, of gunshot wound and explaining what it can do to the body? Gunshot wounds is basically uh, an, an intrusion of a foreign body into a place where it shouldn't go. And so the damage is going to have to do with where it, where it hits and where it touches. Um, my background, I worked in the ER, so I took care of quite a few gunshot wounds. I've had one gunshot wound in Hayworth, believe it or not, that I've had to address. Um, so not too much obviously here in town. Uh, so the damage has to do with where did it hit you? Um, what was the distance? What was the size of the bullet? Uh, how, you know, and when I say distance, how far away? Because obviously a close, closer shot is going to create more damage um, as opposed to at times far away. So that's kind of a difficult question in terms of really being able to say this is the only thing obviously a gunshot wound is going to do. Um, the gunshot wound that I had here in town was a through and through on one leg and lodged into the other leg. So the, the damage was really just soft tissue. I mean, it was just muscle. Um, but can you imagine if it was, I mean, if, if the patient, if the patient was hit here right below the knees, I mean, literally an inch above, this patient would have been a double amputee above the knees. I mean, so, so it, Really, the proximity or where where your where the injury occurs is going to tell you what damage is done, what the prognosis is, and what prognosis means is 
is it going to get better? Is it something that can heal? And in this particular patient, it was literally an inch saved this person from having to have, you know, literally blowing out both knees and having to have them cut off. So. In the book, our main character, Justice, talks about how the shot to the chest cracked a rib and punctured his right lung, but the bullet he took to the right shoulder messed up a bunch of nerves. After three surgeries, he finally regained the feeling in his fingertips. How do you treat a patient with these injuries? Some of these injuries, there is no treatment. I mean, some of the damage, the truth is that it's permanent. Nerve damage is very difficult. Sometimes the nerves will grow back or you'll grow new nerves. But sometimes once it's damaged, it's damaged. And it just depends on the extent of the damage and the health of that person, the age of that person. Um, so punctured, broken ribs, people have break their ribs all the time. They hurt, but they're not serious. The problem is, is that the ribs are supposed to come around the chest. We believe in healthcare that God created people with ribs to come around their lungs and protect their lungs. I mean, that's why we believe we have ribs, really no other purpose. And so you break one of those bones, not a big deal. But you break one of those bones and it injures that thing underneath it, that spongy that you should, that it's there to protect, that's a problem. That means you don't breathe. That means that lung can't open and close to allow breathing. So that's where the, that damages. Um, punctured lungs, generally speaking, can heal. Um, and a lot of times they'll heal without any long-term consequences. The shoulder injury uh, between scar tissue, between nerve damage, that person will probably have some type of arthritis or issue the rest of their life, and it just will never be back to normal. Um, what kind of treatment would this character have to have in order to heal? Um, so things on their own. So, okay, so when we look at treatment of any problem, we have to look at what the patient needs to do and what the doctor should be doing for the patient, right? So what the patient needs to do is they need to be eating a really good diet. Lots of protein helps rebuilding. We, you know that as an athlete. If you want to get big muscles, we say eat protein. It helps you rebuild. So a good diet. Smoking keeps you from healing your wounds. So if you're a smoker, that's imperative that you quit smoking. Otherwise, you just won't heal. <clears throat> so that's one another thing rest you know if you have an injury and you perpetually do this over and over and over it's like not going to get better it's like if you sprain your ankle and you proceed to just keep running on it it's gonna bother you you have to rest it um, and then what the doctor will need to do obviously the surgeries potentially medication to manage inflammation or swelling and probably a ton of physical therapy to get motion back um, what do they do in those surgeries it depends on what the injury is. Um, sometimes if there's a lot of tearing, it's a, it's a matter of putting pieces back together. If the bone is shattered, sometimes it's a matter of cleaning up bone fragment, cleaning out scar tissue. If they have a lot of bleeding in the joint, they'll drain all that blood out of the joint. Um, they'll immobilize it. They'll It basically becomes like a puzzle that has just been like thrown on the table. You wanna see the whole picture, you gotta put it together and you gotta glue it down and then keep it like that. And so very similar with, with a joint surgery, if, especially with a gunshot wound, it's gonna be very literally blown up. Uh, and so it's gonna mean a lot of putting pieces back together, reconnecting tissue, and then allowing it to heal, and then getting that person back into motion exercises. What do you do when you have to make an important decision without enough information? Cry. I'm just kidding. I do sometimes. That happens. Um, I call for help. I think that's the best thing that I've had to learn in, in my job is sometimes I don't know what the right answer is and I don't know what the diagnosis or what the treatment is. I don't know what to do. And most of the time, people that come see me, they don't care if I don't know what to do. They want to know that I'm going to figure out what to do. And that usually means calling someone, calling a specialist, looking it up, doing some research, figure it out, and go maybe the next day go back to the patient and say, okay, I have a game plan. I called Mayo Clinic. I called this doctor in Bloomington or, you know. So I get help. Yeah. How long does it take, long does it take to treat a gun? 
depends on the wound. It depends on uh, the location, just like everything else. I mean, how long does it take to treat a sprained ankle or how long does it treat to, you know, to, to treat a, a broken arm? Um, it just depends on the injury, the location, and the type of treatment needed uh, and how extensive that injury is. But not fast, no matter what. Just, just suffice it to say, not fast. Is there any way to survive a gunshot? And if so, where would you have to get shot at to survive? Well, the truth is sometimes I think that we're not in control. And sometimes things happen that we can't make sense of. Some, sometimes people survive things that you never, I would never would think survive. Um, so the, I, I, that's like asking me to play God, to say who, who can do what and who can't. Um, obviously the patient that I told you about earlier that got shot through and through in both legs, she survived just fine. She's got no problems. Um, does she realize how lucky she is? Probably not. Um, but then I look at other patients that I've literally, you know, they've had, I mean, had gunshot wounds and they've literally survived with it. So it doesn't make sense. I can't answer that. What is the first thing you do when you hear that someone got shot? Um, uh, most of the time I'm like, well, what were they doing? First, truthfully, I'm like, in our area, most of the time, people don't get shot for no reason. Just saying, we don't live in Chicago. Um, that's the good thing. But, um, no, I usually will wonder um, where where they got shot at, that the location of the wound is probably one of the most telling things about their ability to survive. Do you ever have to deal with people who have been shot? Like, yep. Oh, I know. What is the survival rate of getting shot in the head? No idea. <laughs> I'd have to look that up. I mean, I'm sure there's statistics out there um, and numbers, but I don't know what they are. I would say likely pretty low, but I can't give you a number on that. Um, in the book, when a man gets shot, um, what would be the first thing that, um, or like a non, um, what do you call it, doctor? So, like, let's say you're walking your dog down the street kind of thing and you yeah. just happen to see it. Um, what they should do, yeah, what they should do is make sure it's safe. Um, obviously, if you're unarmed and walking into a situation where there's somebody that's maybe under the influence of drugs and alcohol that has a gun, probably not the wisest thing to think you're going to go in and help. You're probably just going to go in and be another victim, and then you haven't helped anything. So ideally you wanna assure the scene is safe and then hopefully you'll have some knowledge to at least check the person. Are they breathing? Can you see if they have a pulse? Can you alert for help? Can you just simply hold pressure on a bleeding wound? It doesn't have to be anything really special, but it can make a huge difference. Uh. In the book, when Manny gets shot, what's the best thing to do to prevent the bleeding? And what if, and what if you don't have the have a first aid? How can you stop the blood flow to help him survive a little bit longer? Well, I'm sure we watched enough shows to to know that obviously direct pressure. Um, there are certain areas that are hard to hold pressure on, or wounds that are really big. I mean, let's face it: if it's a huge dude that's bleeding out. There's not a whole lot that I'm gonna physically be able to do at times to stop the wound. Um, there's thoughts of can you can you use a belt, can you use a strap, can you use something to maybe cut blood, so blood supply off and maybe make a tourniquet? Can you take your shirt off and use that as, as a, a dressing? You'll just have to get creative and sometimes that's hard to do in the moment when you're freaking out <laughs> to think about what to do. And what you know, and then you look back and go, "Oh, I could have done this. I could have reached for that blanket or that jacket or whatever." But you, know, you go with what you have and hope that you can think clearly in that situation. Well, that's all. Okay. Is there anything else I can do for you guys? That's all we got. Any other questions? Don't get shot. <laughs>